Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course of reasoning and logic. This one is about an old exam question, an old exam question in which we need to provide a proof for a claim about positive integers. And I took this one from an exam where we hadn't covered induction yet, so induction can't be the way to do it. Although if you want to give it a go using induction, you should of course feel free to try it, though I still wouldn't recommend it. So how can we do this then? Well, let's first take a good look at the claim. The claim says, for all positive integers n, if 3 does not divide n, then 3 divides n squared plus 2. Now there's a few things we could try. We could just try a direct proof without any other fancy techniques, but that's going to be hard. And the reason why I say that is because of this part, if 3 does not divide n. Because all we know is that something is not true. And that's usually not a great place to start a proof from. So let's see if we can apply one of our extra techniques. Maybe if we take the contrapositive of this thing, we can get rid of this negation. Well, we can. The contrapositive of this would be 3 does not divide n squared plus 2 implies 3 divides n. So hurrah, we've gotten rid of it here. But in the assuming part of our implication, once again, we have introduced this thing and now we only know something isn't true. But it's usually much easier to start a proof from knowing something is true. So contrapositive, not going to be the solution here. Maybe then a proof by contradiction. So how does a proof by contradiction work again? We assume the first part is true. Ah, okay. And that the second part is not true. Oh, so now I know two things that are not true. Well, that's great. That probably doesn't help me much either. Fortunately, there is one more method that you know about, and that one I think is great here. It is the idea of using a proof by division into cases. Because what do I know? Well, if 3 does not divide n, then that means there's two options. Either n is 3 times, let me change the size of my pen here a little bit. This is not great. n is either 3 times some integer plus 1, or n is 3 times some integer plus 2. These are the remainders that are non-zero that we can have when dividing by 3 after all. So either 3k plus 1 or 3k plus 2. And that's exactly what we're going to use in our proof. So, well, what do we do? We're claiming a for all statement. If we're, or the claim is a for all statement. If I'm proving that, the first thing I do is I take an arbitrary. I take an arbitrary what? I take an arbitrary positive integer k such that the first part of my statement is true. 3 does not divide k. This means I can exhaustively divide the proof in two cases. One k equals 3 times some integer plus 1 and 2 k equals 3 times some integer plus 2. And now for both I do the math. So what do I need to show? I need to prove that k squared plus 2 is divisible by 3. Okay, so k squared plus 2 equals 3m plus 1 squared plus 2. That's 9m squared plus 6m plus 1 plus 2. That's 9m squared plus 6m plus 3. That's moving the whiteboard. 3 times 3m squared plus 2m plus 1, which means this is 3 times, well, let's give it a random letter, z, 
4 z equals 3m squared plus 2m plus 1. So 3 divides k squared plus 2. And if you like, you can add a nice curly thing to indicate that you're done with this one. So there we go, the first half of our proof. For k equals 3m plus 1, we have shown that the statements holds, a statement holds. But, well, there were two cases, so let's also do the second one. Again, I need to prove that 3 divides k squared plus 2. So let's calculate what k squared plus 2 is. Well, some high school math tells us if I did the math right, that it is 9m squared plus 12m plus 6. Ah, hang on, which is exactly 3 times 3m squared plus 4m plus 2, which is 3 times z with z equals stuff that is disappearing behind my webcam for you. 3m squared plus 4m plus 2. So 3 divides k squared plus 2. Curly thing. And so in the second case, it also holds. Now all we need to do is wrap up the proof. Since 3 divides k squared plus 2 in all cases and k was arbitrarily chosen, it holds for all n if 3 does not divide n, and then 3 divides n squared plus 2. Q, E, D. Oh. No, I don't want to move this word. I want to move the whole thing. There we go. And there you have it. I'll zoom out a little bit so that you can see the full proof in one go. Here is our proof by division into cases for this claim. Remember, it's still a for all statement, so we also have the proof by generalization strategy, which is recognizable by this first and this last sentence. But we also have our proof by division into cases with our cases and the concluding sentence there. That's all I wanted to talk to you about in this video. I hope to see you around for a future one. Bye for now.